up. That was the best wheelie I've done in here. I turn, turn, do turn. Go, boy, go. That must be pretty exciting. It's gonna be another, another win. <laughs> it's 10,000 square meters of KTM history. Um, I hope you're all doing really well and that you're getting to enjoy the winter while we wait for the first round of the 2021 MotoGP season. And in order to make the wait a little easier, we thought we'd make a very special pre-season Inside Pass edition. And since the Red Bull KTM Factory team have invited us to attend the team presentation shoot, which we're not going to be able to attend on site in Austria because of the world situation, we're still going to get to spend some quality time with both Brett Binder and Miguel Oliveira over the phone. So let's go ahead and talk to the riders. about to have a chat with Miguel Oliveira. So let's see if he's already ready for us. Oh. Hey, Miguel. Hey, <laughs> hello. How's it going? Good, and you? How are you? <laughs> good, good. Um, so you, you are going to make the tour with us? Uh, yes, please, because I've never been to the motor hall. So. This is... Uh, René Estebauer. René is, uh, is the director here. And Hi, Rennie. Hello, the museum. nice to meet you. You're in Austria because you're doing all of the pre-season like promotional work, and getting to do the tour is a bit of a bonus, and that's why we're sort of tagging <laughs> along with you. <laughs> you cannot imagine. You need to. You need to come here seriously because the the whole building is 10,000 square meters of KTM history. How many bikes do they have in there? Yeah, at least 400. Basically, they're going to send some some bikes to my house because they are running out of space. <laughs> here is the history of our, of our bikes. Um, the first one you see here, the, the KTM Apfelbeck um, from 1957. This is 94. the first KTM Duke here. Wow. So here is our heroes area. Um, here are 28 selected heroes, made a good step and a, a good performance in the history of KTM. It is a privilege to be here. I hope I can make it with the MotoGP bike. The ultimate dream for any rider, obviously, is to you know get to the MotoGP class, but also to do it in a factory team. You're now a factory rider. How does that feel now? When I entered the project, I knew I had a chance. I take it as an accomplished goal, but not for granted, you know, because it's hard to get there and it's even harder to keep improving yourself to, to defend the spot that many guys want. My main motivation is to win races and be world champion with KTM. So easy target, uh, but hard to achieve and a lot of work. <laughs> you know what's also very special about you is that you've had, you know, you've gone the whole like road to MotoGP also with KTM, like you've had the KTM, you've ridden the KTM in Moto3, you've done it in Moto2 and now in the top class. I think it looks quite, uh, quite good and it passes a message that there is no fixed way to progress in the career, but if you are able to do with one brand and the brand is able to trust in you, um, I think you, you develop loyalty and you develop a sense of purpose. You see the guys who have made it to the top uh, and stayed there a long time. You know the years that they have been connected with factories, Dovi, Marquez or Valentino, Lorenzo. Yeah. You know these guys have been all the time putting the effort in one place. And that's definitely what I want to do. The last race of the season, you were probably the happiest man to do it at, you know, at your home Grand Prix. It must have been, you know, super special. The weekend speaks for itself. <laughs> it was one of the times where a good, a good job comes with no effort. The way you enjoy is completely different. So it was, this was nice. It just got confirmed a few days ago that Portimao is confirmed back in the calendar for this season too. So that must be pretty exciting. It's going to be another another win. <laughs> in 2016, here is the first bike of um, Alex Hoffmann, um, who was made the first rollout together with Mikael Kallio in Spielberg. Now we have one real uh, MotoGP engine from KTM here. It's not normal that we bring it in our exhibition. And here we are at the end of our highlight um, special exhibition. Um, here you see both of the winner bikes of 2020. I, I really miss my this bike. 
design is so cool. But hey, look, oh. two times. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miguel. Thank and you, Vanessa. I will... I'll see you in Qatar? Yes, hopefully. <laughs> Let's stop filming. Let's talk to Brad Binder now. Hey, Vanessa, how's it going? Hi, Brad. Good, how are you? Yeah, all good, thanks. I heard they've been keeping you quite busy today and you're taking a bit of a break and taking a tour, is that it? Yeah, we actually we're taking a walk around the motor hall at the moment. And there's one or two trophies here if you can you believe it, eh? Is is yours anywhere there? Mine. From 2020? Hopefully over the years at least one of them ended up there. <laughs> if if you had to pick one of the bikes from the from the heroes hall, which one would you pick and why? To take home, cheese like how would you choose one? I'll let you do top three. Well, it would be nice to, I'd take the one, the Moto2 bike home for sure. And okay. then uh, a Moto GP one, because then I have all three. Because I have the Moto3 bike at home too. Okay, so you, you're starting your own uh, museum back in at home in South Africa, is that it? Hey, hopefully one day, hopefully one day. So uh -huh. I'm a bit taller eh, in the thing, yeah? <laughs> so Brad, what is your... <laughs> favorite memory with that bike that you're next to right now i don't know the whole year was pretty good to be fair um yeah. one of one of the best best days on this bike was probably my first win which was awesome for sure many 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 good memories on this bike that's for sure it's crazy to actually look back and look at all the old bikes and how much things have changed over the years eh? And not only that has changed, but both you and Miguel have come a long way and you are reuniting back as teammates this season. Yeah, I mean, Miguel and I go way back. Um, we, we obviously started in the factory KTM team together in 2015 for the first time. It's going to be cool. I'm super excited to, to get this year started. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a good season for us both. Take a bit of a look back to 2020. For you, it was your rookie season and you ended up being the rookie of the year and achieving your first ever MotoGP class win. So you set the bar pretty high. What goals are you setting yourself in this 2021 season? Yeah, I mean, it, it's safe to say 2020 went much, much better than we could have ever have, had hoped. And, um, you know, to, to walk away with a win in your rookie year is incredible. There's still a lot I can improve and I have a long way to go. But uh, I know I can do a good job this year. I just need to try to stay on the bike a bit more. What have you been up to in this off season? See, I did a three day cycle race, chill out after the 2020 season. And since then I've just been really focusing on trying to do a, a lot of riding. Um, I've been doing a lot of cycling, gym. So just pretty much trying to get the body ready for the season. And uh, yeah, I, I actually got back to Europe yesterday. So it's nice to be back. A pity it's a lot colder here than in South Africa, but um, <laughs> It's it's super good to be back. I can't wait to get started again. You said you cycle and you ride, but what, what bike do you ride in the off-season? When I go home, I do a lot of motocross. It's a pity I can't ride like these guys on a dirt bike, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it was really a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, it's time to change back over to the road because that's definitely what I'm a lot better at. Have you ever considered maybe in the future one day you know, participate in a Dakar? I think I'm more of like a, you know, get on the bike and go flat out for maximum of 45 minutes and call it quits, you know? So yeah. I'm not too <laughs> sure if I'm into this uh, couple weeks, two, three weeks story, but um, I don't know, should we ask him what he thinks? I think we're going to be waiting a while, man. <laughs> I know you guys have a pretty tight schedule today and they've been keeping you really busy. What have you been doing today? Sorry, I lost you there. I didn't catch what you were saying. Check that car though. Car. How sick oh. is this thing? Uh, I don't know, but you and I need to talk to someone and we need to try to film some sort of a challenge with that car at the Red Bull ring. What do you think? It will be a hell of a lot better than those radio control cars you made us race, let me tell you. Oh, oh. Super flat. Oh, no. no, no, no. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> right, man, we're working on the budget for this 2021 season. Yeah. It's cool, eh? When you turn the throttle, it revs. Up, 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 up. <laughs> that was the best wheelie I've done in here. Here's my bike. <laughs> 
So do do you think, do you reckon they'll let you take that bike, you know, at the end of your career? Uh geez, I wouldn't. No. I'm definitely gonna ask. <laughs> oh, there is a simulator here. Just give it a bit. shot. I oh, turn, turn, very turn. Go boy, go. No, no, no. Oh! Oh, oh! Jeez, that reminded me oh, that of hurts. a couple of our mates <laughs> last year. Okay, I'm done. I can wait to see you and all of the MotoGP guys out on track in Qatar. So see you in a few weeks. Awesome. Thanks, Vanessa. Nice chatting to you and I'll catch you soon. It was really great to get to catch up with both Brad and Miguel ahead of the season. And on the next episode of Inside Pass, we're going to actually get to attend the Repsol Honda team presentation since it takes place in Spain. How much do you want to get on the bike now? 12. <laughs> you know that is something that I miss? Interview? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> a lion! A lion! No, 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 no. But not only that, because we're going to be heading over to Cervera to speak with Mark Marquez in his hometown. And we're going to head over up into the mountains to spend some quality time with Paul Espargaro. So if you don't want to miss out on any of that, you better subscribe to the Rebel Motorsport YouTube channel so you don't miss this next episode of Inside Pass. See you next time.